So recorded live from Atlanta and live from Las Vegas. And live from Massachusetts, central Massachusetts, uh, Lemiston, Massachusetts, home of Johnny Appleseed. There you go. All right. All right. We have, uh, you are here with the Keto Show with Tom and Mike, and our special guest today is Ron from Ron's Keto Cafe. Oh, Welcome, Ron. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me on the uh, show. It's been a very uh, pleasure meeting both of you guys through the internet, and at some point, maybe we can all get together and actually have a keto party and uh, a big get, get together with anybody that might want to join us. Have like a, how about a keto convention down the road? Yeah, I love it. Great. I yeah, love it. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. I yeah, love no, it. No, no cauliflower rice. <laughs> yeah, so. I do I do on occasion we'll make a cauliflower pizza though. I like I love that pizzas every now and then. Yeah. That's that's our running joke because a lot of my videos I put on and say it's when people say, Well, it's, I'm gonna have rice tonight, so it's cauliflower uh, uh, cauliflower rice. I say no, yeah. it's not cauliflower, it's rice cauliflower. <laughs> 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 and Mike breaks my chops about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in jest. All okay. in jest. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ron, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your, your start on uh, keto. What got you started on it? Okay. Uh, what what led you to do it? That kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm in the hot seat now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know. You, okay. You know, so, okay. Let me just go ahead and uh, introduce myself. My name is Ron. My last name is Gerard. I live out here in North Central Massachusetts, a uh, city called Lemister. We're a population of uh, about 120,000 people. I've been living here pretty much most of my life. I did try living in Canada for a few months, but my mom and stepdad was living there. I hated it. And I went to South Carolina for a few months. I hated it over there, even worse. We did live in Plymouth, Massachusetts for a year where my wife is originally from. I was living two minutes from the ocean. I could have just walked to the beach anytime I wanted to see the Pilgrim and uh, Mayflower and Plymouth Rock and all that area. I hated it. I, uh, my, I'm not a beach going person and we could get fresh fish right off the pier anytime I wanted. But I just, I, I wanted to come back home. Lemons is where I plan on living. Lemons is where I plan on hope. No, well, at some point in my life, I'm going to, meet my creator but um hopefully many moons and years from now and uh yeah this is why i want to stay so and i'm 66 years old i'm married i uh we have no children we've been together for 42 years my wife i've only been married once and that once is enough <laughs> i don't know if i'll ever get married again go off a bit if something happens to donna but you know it, we, we we uh we get along like two peas in a pod she understands me uh, Donna doesn't do the ketogenic lifestyle, but she will eat some of my foods, but not all of my foods. And that's a very tough, particular question to answer. What do you do if you're the only one in your family doing low carb keto and the rest of the family don't? And you got a large family. Mm -hmm. That's really hard answer. The hard answer. To, and the price of foods are so expensive. You can't you can't justify your budget. To, to, you know, I got to go according to our budget. Would I love to get the organic and all that stuff? Yeah, but yeah, I, I, we, we're on one income, and exactly. and we're both retired. We we got a you know a social security and my pension, and when that money is gone, it's a long haul before you get your next check, and you got to make your food and your budget last. So sometimes they tend to see to go off my meal plan, and and, and I have to do it, you know, the budget and our meal according to my budget every month. Now uh, let's get back to the, uh, the the topic of the question. Um, so I started my weight loss journey officially on August 17, 2020. I'm five six, and I was currently at that time I was 325 pounds. And uh, going back to January of that same year, I was 367 pounds. And going back a little further than that, I was pretty close to 400 pounds. And when I married Dawn, I was 400 pounds. So I was quite big over the years. And uh, I tried every known diet to man out there. I tried the paleo diet. I tried the Atkinson diet. The Atkinson diet was kind of like the, the keto spinoff, right. really. And then we tried the Jenny Craig's, the Nutrisystems. I had somewhat success on the uh, Weight Watch plan when it was Weight Watchers. Now it's WW. What I kind of liked about that plan was you had your app and you scanned your item and it gave you your points. And when your points, you didn't have to worry about macros or anything. Once you hit your points, you were done for the day. And, uh, but you know, again, it was an online fee, didn't feel comfortable going way in every week and all that sort of thing. And, uh, so 2020, this hit, and uh, we're not going to reference it because I don't want any strikes on your channels. Um, 
a lot of my friends became couch potatoes and gained a lot of weight. Well, I oh, came yeah. just the opposite. I wanted to do something with my weight. And back earlier in that same year, in January 2020, I had an MRI in our local city because all that time he thought it was my back and I had a lot of issues and I couldn't walk without the assistance of a cane. And uh, so then um, what happened was that was the big wake up call. They had to go to Worcester for the uh, MRI machine because uh, I couldn't fit into the smaller machine. And uh, I said, well, I got to do something about my weight. And she says, do you want weight loss surgery? And I said, yeah, okay, we'll get weight loss surgery. And my mom begged me not to have it done. My mom had that done back in the early 70s. And she was one of the very first ones that had it done in Canada. And she had a lot of complications with a scopicist and, a, and a, you know, every time she couldn't hold anything down. And uh, she knew all the pain and suffering that she had. She begged me not to have it. I knew six months before she was going to pass. And two, she passed in 210. They hit it pretty much right on the button. She had cancer, and uh, she begged me not to have it done. But in the meantime, I had all my pre-ops, and I had the, I had the surgery day and all of that. And uh, I was going to have it done up in the uh, Emerson Hospital here, close to the city in Boston, where they do weight loss. I was going to get the gastric sleeve surgery, mm -hmm. where they put the banner on your 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 uh, stomach. And uh, we had all the appointments, and I said, no, there's got to be a better way. I, I wanted to honor my mom's decision, and I, I trusted my – I reconnected my faith with God and everything like that. And, and uh, I did some more research, and I talked again to my doctor, and, he, and uh, I said, well, I, I tried keto before, and I wasn't doing it the right way because I wasn't properly educated with the ketogenic lifestyle. And uh, typically, uh, it, it doesn't – here's the deal – Everybody that I talk to about keto, they give you that funny look. You're doing keto, you know. Even those guys, even even those guys I volunteer with, they seem to think that the people that follow the ketogenic lifestyle, they seem to think, oh, it's it's all eggs, it's all bacon, it's all greasy foods. They they have they haven't got a clue. I call them normies now. They're, they're normies, okay? Because they're false and, information, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they're not educated. Like, you know, you guys have became educated, and I became educated. Now, that was the first time I tried keto. I did lose some weight. So then I asked the uh, doctor, how do you feel about me doing the ketogenic lifestyle? And I call it a lifestyle, guys and gals who might be watching us. The term mm -hmm. diet to me means – Restrictive. I don't keto. like that terminology. Right. Diet. Right. So, so we, we call it people that follow keto. Mm -hmm. We call it. We call it a lifestyle because it truly is. Right. And once you uh, go on to that lifestyle, that you um, you figure it out. I got permission from my doctor, and uh, she said, uh, if, "If I got any complications with blood work, or I'm not sure, I make sure that." Um, all my, you know, my cholesterol level is right and everything that, everything. I, so when I started losing weight, I, I, of course, my big belly and I was talking about all that stuff there, but at the beginning, I, I uh, anyways, I got permission from my doctor and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. And uh, so anyways, I started doing my research through Google, got involved with some YouTube channelers and, yeah, and uh, when you'd, for the guys and gals out there that are considering keto or any weight loss program for that matter. Oh, and, and we always state this always in my uh, videos that we're not doctors. We don't make any medical claims. This is all based right. on our journeys. And, and I'm not here to give it medical advice. I would never do that. And, and uh, I, I do have a support group runs keto cafe support on social media, Facebook. I do not give medical advice. You guys can put, your channels on my Facebook support group. I don't have a problem with that. Anybody can. I don't promote drugs. That's the only thing I ask for. I, I don't do right. drugs for weight loss or drugs for any man or any hardcore right. alcohol, any of this stuff on, on my channel. I keep it clean, simple. I, I, I put recipes up there from other YouTubers and I'm trying to help other YouTubers on, on the grow their channels as well as you guys are trying to help me grow my channel. And, uh, I really appreciate that. So, um, our pleasure. Okay. Hey, yeah. hey we're all well, in this yeah, together. Ahead. We're yeah. all in it together, yeah. man. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're all losing yeah. weight together. Well, we're all and living exactly. life we're together. All, yeah. We're all in it. To, we're all in it to win it. So when exactly. it, when I when I started the ketogenic lifestyle and, and uh, I went on Keto Rewind, she was the first one that I channel that I actually subscribed to. 
her, Ch Jess and Kyle both the, the, and the mom was uh, had the weight loss surgery not too long, uh, actually not quite a number of years ago, and uh, they her, she was actually my exact height my exact weight when I started and her husband was a little heavier than she was. And, uh, so this is cool. So she was like about maybe, maybe a 60 weeks ahead of me when she started her channel. And then I started backtracking and binge watching her channel. And then I started binge watching everybody else's channel. And then I soon got really uh, Dr. Berg and all the other, all the other ones that are out there. Doc, uh, there's, there's, there's so many of them. And then it, I, the biggest thing that I had done too, uh, I would highly recommend fasting and intermittent fasting for those guys and gals that don't know what that is. There's all kinds of fastings out there, but and you do what works for you. And I often tell people that you do you. I do intermittent fasting. I do 16 a fasting. What I do typically, and even now, I'll start eating around 11 o'clock in the morning and I'll fast till about six o'clock at night and then I'll cut it off the rest of the day. Now I don't count my coffee as part of my fast because I drink, I got to have my coffee in the morning because yeah. I wouldn't be miserable, you know what, without the coffee. And I do have coffee cream and I have milk for my, my, my for my choice of my sweetener. And uh, that's how I've been very, very successful losing my, the weight. And I, I, I stick to the fasting to this day. I did try the 23-1 fasting where you have one hour eat, eaten during the course of the day. That was really rough. That's and, I, and I know one YouTuber, well, Jess, as a matter of fact, she does AD fasting. One day she'll eat, one day she'll fast. I mean, I, to, I don't know. But to me, my body tells me I need food every day. for to yeah, get me, Not, for, not my for our day. age. Yeah. Not for our age. It's not yeah, good. That's a, but she, that's a young thing. But yeah, but she's yeah. in her 40s. That makes a big difference in age. But, you know, when you got two little young kids around in the house and you're chasing after the kids and the pets all day long, you know, I, I get it. But that's not for me. Yeah. You know, so so I've been very successful. Uh, what, what I would uh, suggest to people if they're starting out for the first time, Pick up. Um, let's see. I, I just, just, I just unplug it really quick, and then can plug it back in afterwards. I have one of these portable hard drives. This is a twelve terabyte hard drive. You don't really need anything that big if you're starting out. But I do a lot of photographs for our city, and I archive a lot of the uh, vintage photographs that we have in video, and I store all my all my information in here. As a matter of fact, I got like about ten of these in the house, and they do fill up quite fast, especially when you're doing a lot of video. So what I do is I, I create a master folder, Ron's Keto Cafe, and then I have it well organized by the weeks, uh, food videos and uh, photographs and stuff like that. And if you're starting keto or weight loss for that matter, it doesn't have to be necessarily the ketogenic lifestyle. It could be any weight loss. Um, take your measurements, get your scale numbers, record it. And, and I, I put everything in Word doc and I also record everything on notepads like this just to have it for notes. Cause I never know if I might want to write a book someday. And, uh, that's how I've been very, very, very successful. Take lots of measurements. I measure my neck. I measure my chest, my, my breast to breast, my, uh, belly button to belly button, my waist to waist. And then at the very first day when I started weight loss, I, I measured my, my wrist, my, biceps, my thighs, my ankles, I measured everything and I had that all written down. And then then every so often I'll I'll measure myself again and, and then to see how much has changed over the years. And and I, I what amazes me guys and gals out there that are watching this, I'm lucky I'm not dead. I'm not kidding you because had I continued the had I continued the path that I was going on and not lost the weight that I lost I don't think I would have been here talking about it. Mm -hmm. And what really propelled me to keep going and besides you guys is mm -hmm. putting myself out there publicly to have my best chance to lose the weight. And the most important right. thing, connect with your faith. And if you don't believe in faith, that's fine. But, but at least believe in yourself. Right. And try to find a friend to do this with because that's what I did. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I meet up with friends all the time. Uh, I, I can't even go outside the house with somebody knowing me. That's how popular I am here in the city. And, and uh, the other day I was, I'm walking in 13 degrees uh, below uh, zero weather out here in our city. And she, uh, Julie says to me, Ron, I, did you see me uh, walking by the bank the other day? She goes, did, did you see me? That was me that tooted at you. And I said, well, why don't you just pull over and say hi? Because I'm always trying to match up the face with the name and it, because it's, it makes it more intimate to me when I know who's actually said hi to me. And it's been a real pleasure doing this. I, I do a lot of stuff for the city. You guys know that. But I did have uh, an emotional breakdown last couple of weeks ago. 
I mean, really bad. And uh, a friend of mine came up to me. She, we met at the local coffee shop in the morning. And uh, she gave me a hug and she gave me a kiss. And she said, Ron, I said, I, I'm going to tell you what to do. Just tell everybody with the city, because I've been doing the city stuff, volunteering now since 2012. And she said, um, just take an extended personal leave of absence from the volunteering and go back when you're ready to go back. And if you don't want to go back, don't go back. And so that's currently what I'm on. I'm on an extended an extended leave of absence from any city activity. Now, yesterday, uh, Saturday, our city did a, a an event. And uh, I would have normally had been there at that event, taking video and or photographs or helping out with the canteen wagon with the emergency management center because they pass out hot, uh, hot chocolate and cookies for the kids. And the mayor's there and doing the uh, chestnuts and all that stuff. And... Uh, I, you know what? I felt good not going down there. I says, "Damn!" I, I I goes, "I could get used to that," you know, you know. But <laughs> you, but the mayor has a lot of these pop up events and all that stuff like that, and he's always asking for volunteers, and it, it just got too much for me. It's called and, a lifestyle change. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, I mean, every event they had in our city, like like he does at least six events a week. I was always there with my cameras and my video cameras in tow and taking photographs and video for the city. I'm not doing it no more. I just don't want to do it no more. I don't care about doing it no more. Um, the most important thing in my life right now is my health, my wife's health, and my sisters and my family, and then my many Facebook friends. And that's all that matters to me. The city can yeah. take a back seat to all the stuff right now because I don't need it no more. Even on Friday night, I do the I do uh I do the bingo on Friday night. I, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a volunteer worker. Okay, one one of many. But I, but Donna and I over the years we played bingo over the years. That's that's what our thing was. And we only got one bingo left in our area, and that's the one. And I'm not giving that up for anybody because. And I talked to that the, the one that runs to the uh, Paris the other night. They said, you know, she's a better. She said, Ron, you're right. He says, anytime you want to break from the bingo, you want to play, just let us know you can play. If you want a night off, or you, if you don't want to come in for a little while. Just let us know. We'll find another worker for you. And and I appreciate that when she said that to me. And and Friday night's my treat. For, like, like they have, like I can get whatever I want out of the kitchen and I don't have to pay for it because I'm a worker. But I, 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 once in a while I get a hot dog and a regular slice of pizza. I don't call them a cheat day, but that's how I've been very successful to lose my weight. Now, um, currently I'm down to 220 pounds this morning. I'm still well over 100 pounds for, for since 2020. I think that's phenomenal. I mean, how many oh, people yeah, say that's that? Great. That's this, wonderful. This shirt is a size uh, large shirt, and, and uh, now I'm into almost really into a medium, and I'm down to a size 32 pants. The size large shirt was being in the size 4X when I first started the journey, and now I'm in a size 60 pants size down to a 32. So it's like nice. I lost a whole person, you know, and, and yes, which really, really we did because, yes, you know, I, yeah. So th that's basically um, most of the story. I continue to put uh, on my YouTube channel, Ron's Keto Cafe now. I originally had it as uh, Changing Times, uh, Living the Ketogenic Lifestyle, and didn't like that name. And then I made it more personal, Ron's Weight Loss Journey. Uh, it, it was really, really way too long of a name. And then I thought of well, what can, I got the I did like a survey on social media, Facebook, uh, what name would work best? And then one of my friends said, well, I, really, I like that name, Ron's Keto Cafe, because it's catchy. So I, I, I changed it up to that. And since then, I've been picking up more subscribers almost daily, every day. And since I changed the name, actually, I picked up about 150 subscribers. And I wanted to thank everybody that's following me along on my journey. It's been a really true pleasure helping a lot of people getting healthy out there. Now, I did. Um, I can tell, folks, when you yeah. when you first started, I started following you a long time back. You know, okay. And when you were like, I want to say you had like 30 subscribers and or so, and you were uh, doing, the, <clears throat> you would go out walking and yeah. and you would take videos of where you were walking. They were some of the most beautiful and scenic places. Yeah, I, I plan on doing walking. a lot more of that again. They're planning on going up to Mount Monotnock up in New Hampshire this coming summer. Uh, but the problem with that was I went up there a couple of years ago. And, uh, okay, so getting back to my health back then, I was using a cane, okay? And a lot of people, I didn't know this about what happened was um, I was going to Worcester, which is a 
the big city over there where I went into the MRI machine and Dr. Rivera was giving me cortisone shots for my back. And all this time he thought it was my back. And yeah, there's some issues going on with the back, but not nearly as bad as I thought it was. And I uh, went to go see a local chiropractor and he says, Ron, I said, I don't think that's your back. I said, I think it's either your knees or your hips. So we actually took my knees and there was nothing wrong with my knees other than a little bit of arthritis in it. And he says, your right hip is bone to bone and your left hip is not that bad, but eventually you're going to have to have your left hip done. And I said, no wonder I was in a lot of pain. So we, we got the hip replaced back in June. Yeah. And it's been, and it's taken us about six to eight months to get it to really heal up. And, and I, I couldn't even do push ups now, and I couldn't even do push ups before. <laughs> so I, I the, the left hip, are going to put that on the back burner for now because until I actually need to get it done. But my, my cane became my best friend. And when I was starting my journey, everywhere I went, I had the camera in my hand, my cane in the other hand, and it was, it was terrible. And, and, you know, I, I, it got to a point where I couldn't even get my own shoes on, tuck my own stockings on. And now I could do all that stuff on myself without my wife. And, I, you know, I feel a lot more independent than I ever did before. And there you go. It, it's been really great pleasure. Uh, and, and I, and I try and I, and uh, Mike, you see my Facebook post in the morning, every morning I oh, put yeah. up, since, since uh, that hit, I've been putting up good morning quotes to try to try to, to, to try to inspire people. Right. And, and yeah, uh, you, you do those yeah. uh, positive positive posts to yeah you know, yeah because a lot in the, the right frame of mind and the photos that I take locally I put them up on a on a local uh, page and a lot of people like that because a lot of people don't live in our city and they they see what what the actual city looks like now and they really and and where I work with the society and the commission and those organizations. I got access to all the older photographs from the early from the early 1800s on to whenever they started taking photographs, you know, which is, you know, and, and I do a lot of past the present stuff, which is really what I like to do. And uh, uh, I don't know, Mike, if you saw that photograph that I shared today back in 2018 when I was at the, yeah, I, I am also a member of the yeah, Lemister uh, Access Television, the uh, LTV, uh, local access station. I do... Uh, not interviews here, but I had worked in the uh, camera behind, in front of the camera before. But I was in a green screen, and I was doing. Uh, I was interviewing myself, and it was funny because I had, and I was really, <laughs> I was, I was really big. And, and then I took a snapshot off of the video, and, uh, and but we did that all with the green screen, and uh, so what? I, what I have plans to do another one of those. And my, I got a green screen over here to my uh, to my left, and you're right. And uh, I'll probably get in front of the green screen some at some point with the heavier on, and I'll just put the two together, and I'll just I'll make like an avatar where where I'm in, I'm asking myself questions and answering them, you know, and it, it, it'll it'd be kind of funny looking at myself when I was he that heavy with it with how I am now. That's a great you idea. Know, you, you know, yeah. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm that's what I'm I, so I'm doing. Do you have a goal? Do you have a goal that you set? Yeah, yeah. I, you want to get yeah, down yeah. To? Exactly. Um. Glad you asked me that. I my goal has been all along is I never been into Wonderland. And for those guys and gals don't know, it's two hundred pounds or less. I came close last year, two or three twice, and then all of a sudden I thought maybe I could go ahead and just eat what I wanted. The next thing, it just it, you guys know as well as I do, and anybody that's been doing weight loss and is trying to lose weight, it is hard. Oh yeah. If you go up your 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 regiment, which which is so you so used to eating and you want to like like a pizza or something like that and you're not really careful in what you're eating the next thing you know you're going to balloon up to about 20 yeah. or 30 pounds heavy especially if you go on vacation that happened yeah. to, oh, that yeah. happened that happened to that girl just last year she's got a camp up in new hampshire and she, and, and she was like 200 next thing you know the next video she posted when she got back from vacation she was like 250 she gained like about 40 pounds in about a wow. two-month period so wow. it, you know, if you're not vigilant and careful what you're eating, you, you, that's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't. You yeah. can't get. You can't get loose, free and loose with it. You got to. Yeah, it's yeah. And that process food thing, that, that, that you does know? it to you all the time. Now, Tom, oh, now, yeah. I, 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 um, I've been having a lot of problems with my skin being dry, and I got psoriasis and all that, all that stuff. And that, and then I'm doing some Google searching, and and again, I'm going to check this issue with my doctor. I, I think I got a tolerance to gluten. I think gluten might be the culprit of the skin being dry. And no one is doing some research, and that could be one of the major factors to my my, my skin issues. I'm not really sure about oh. that. So I'm going to try to ease off of some of the products with the gluten in them and, and see maybe for about a couple of weeks to see what that does to my stomach. It's 
see if it might help with the dry skin and all that. I, I mean, I don't know, but she uh, she gave me a medicated steroid cream to help it out. But, you know, I mean, dry skin and whatever is usually just uh, it's uh it's an autoimmune and, and uh, it's, right. never gonna, it's never going to go I, away. I have psoriasis. I have yeah. psoriasis. Yeah. I, take, I take a shot for it. And, and I, 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 you know, that's interesting. I have not. You got to watch the steroids. Yeah. You definitely got to watch the steroids because steroids will retain, retain weight, you know, oh, the weight on big time. It. Yeah. But yeah. you might want to, might want to just, you know, just Google it and, and, and just see for the heck of it. And then I, I, you know, I got a recipe that I was going to make today, but I did, I did make, what did I make? Oh yeah. I make, a, I made some cheddar cheese, uh, Parmesan crackers today. And, uh, so I was going to make a uh, bread recipe. I saw a gluten-free uh, bread recipe. I bought the uh, flour that I needed. It's not keto. And I bought the uh, yeast, which I I haven't made this particular bread recipe before. I did make that um, the uh, egg powder recipe with that bread I had made. It was really gross. I tried to. I had a. I first liked it, and, and, and then I, I left it on the counter overnight, and I wanted to try a piece in the next morning. I couldn't. It, it tasted worse than those little ch uh, church wafers they give you when you're doing see, first communion. <laughs> I said they couldn't deal with it. And see, that's see, that's where I'm different than than mostly everybody that, that's doing keto. I eat nothing but whole foods. Okay. Nothing from a box. Nothing, okay. I, everything's fresh as as much as I can get it. Okay. Uh, I'll buy a, a bulk, you know, like a, a broccoli, whatever, vegetables. Yeah. And then I'll blanch them, freeze them, you know, vacuum seal them, put them in there. But I don't eat nothing from a box. And, and I try to stay away from all that. I call it phony bread. Because the ingredients that they're, they're telling you it's keto, keto friendly. That's right. But yeah, if you check it's out not, these. It's not. You know, like Xanum gum. Okay. Zan, well, Xanum gum is good, they tell you. Well, no. Xanum gum is actually a derivative of sugar. That's what it is. It's a That's carbohydrate true. from sugar. Right. That's okay. True. So, but you put that stuff in your system. What you're doing is prolonging everything. Right. You know but, what I'm saying? But you're, getting a, you're getting a ton of fiber with it, but that, you're getting the carbs, but it's all fiber. Yeah, but the fiber don't work for everybody all the time. Exa that's that the, was yeah, exactly. That, that was going to be my point right there. So here, kinda, here's my here's my color. solution. Here's my solution to how I do it. Okay. I try to kill the cravings. So I was an ice cream hound and a bread hound. Being being a chef. I used to make my own, my own bread, my pizza doughs, everything from scratch. Okay. So rather than going around, you know, dancing around the, the elephant in the room. Okay. I go right to the elephant. If I want a slice of pizza, I'm going to go have a slice of pizza, regular pizza, do it, do my penance for it. And then, and then move on to get that craving I, out of the I way. I got the same, I got the same approach. Because if you, if you're going to pussyfoot around with uh, making, like I said, you, you're buying stuff that you don't know the ingredients. You don't know what they are. You know, people, well, they're doing studies. Are, what they what, what, did a study on what, 30 people? Okay. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I don't buy into that stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't buy into it. If you're going to do it, do it the right way. Do it the right. Get to the point. When, when you said before about intermittent fasting, I do the same thing. But I don't put the pressure on me that I have to do. If I eat when I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do the same thing basically yes. too. That's yeah, so so when it when it comes to time, oh, you know what? I'm getting hungry. I'll have a couple scrambled eggs. But seven o'clock at night, I stop everything. Yep. Okay. I have a cutoff too. Yeah. And then it just it seems to work. Ron, you had a nerve when you said you got to have the coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, I am an ugly monster if I don't have my coffee. And I I'll, I don't use any sweeteners because I'm type two diabetic. So I gotta be careful right. with that stuff. You know what I mean? So I'll have heavy cream. I'll put heavy cream in my coffee. And I'll have my two cups and I go on from there. And then, but. J just two? I usually have four. <laughs> uh, you know, I was telling Mike not too long ago, last week or so, I've been starting to drink a lot of coffee throughout the day now. Oh, okay. A lot more throughout the day. So that's something I've never done before. You know what I mean? So, so what I, I don't. Yeah. And what I, I use, I, I'll have a cup of tea late at nighttime if I want like some caffeine in me. So Sheena, I think Sheena was saying something about if you're having a hard time sleeping at night, have a pad of butter. And really? yeah, huh. something about the, in the cream. There's something in the cream, in the butter, that it's like a stimulant to hold it. But I cringe because, ah, what, we're all the same same age group, okay? Yep. So we, we grew up in the part where, hey, you know what? Don't eat the butter. Stay away from the cream. Low fat. All that, stuff. that stuff like to kill me. Or that low fat stuff. 
this is like unbelievable that, you know, you can have butter and we don't, I don't abuse it. I mean, I cook with it a little bit right. and whatever I make, I'll have my olive oil. And I noticed since I got away from the seed oils and stuff, my skin didn't dry up. Okay. So with the olive oil, avocado oil, uh, butter is the only, th only oils that I use or, or, or uh, fats that are used with it and fat from the meats and stuff like that. And uh, I've been moving along pretty good with it. So. Yeah, I, I know uh, one lady on YouTube. She uh, she eats one but one stick of butter a day, and and uh, I'm saying that's kind of gross. Just eating a stick of butter the way it is, but uh, yeah, it, it's been helping her with the skin issues, and it's been helping her lose yeah. the weight, keeping the skin on, keeping the weight off. So that, again, I tell everybody, all of us here are not doctors, and we would suggest can't argue with doing success. Your, doing your own uh, research on that before you start anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, See, I, yeah. I, sw I switched doctors too. I switched, That's I right. went from an MD to a DO. Okay. Uh -huh. DO is a little bit more holistic. Uh, he's a little bit more for helping, to, you know, curing it rather than treating it. Okay. So uh, I just, Mike, I finally got my blood work done the other day. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Almost a month trying to fight, trying to get an appointment. Anyway, uh, he's more or less along the lines of getting me off the different medications. We've been successful up to three, down to three from 12. Okay. I'm 68. So, uh, same thing. Like you have tough walking with a cane, broke both my, my ankle on one foot, my leg on the other foot and the ankle. So I know what it is to be married to a cane. I don't have that no more. You know what I mean? Moving around. So your success story taps on every one of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your weight loss is fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's oh, that yeah. to me is like unbelievable. Oh, man, absolutely. I, yeah. I applaud you. And you, and you and you when you tell your story, people look and he's like, yeah, 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 right. No, no, man, right here. I'm living proof. This guy over here is living proof, and you're living yeah, proof. Yeah, well, yeah. what I like about yeah, all our uh, all our uh, channels is that we have it on video as well as uh, Word Doc, and and because I it was important to have that all up there because then people could, like you said, oh yeah, you're full of junk or whatever. No, just go take a look at some of my older yeah, videos. And you could say my very first, I would say my very first three or four videos, the way I was talking, I was so nervous and everything like that. <laughs> and now I talk with, like, I actually know what I'm doing. And I, and I, I, I know what I'm doing when I, when I, when I can, I can say what I want to say. Now you were talking about Kane. Here's a funny story that we, we have in the area, we have festivals at the, we had the yeah, fall festival in a, uh, um, the, not the Johnny Appleseed Festival. We have that in our city, but um, in the fall, the, the couple of towns over had they have a huge fall festival in the uh, fall time, and uh, they call it the Sterling Fair is what it is, and they have all animals and stuff like that, and they you know rides and all that uh, you know the fairground stuff with the foods and everything. So Donna and I are walking through the fairgrounds that day. And they were passing out free walking sticks. And the guy came up to me and he says, you want a free walking stick? I goes, no, I don't want a walking stick. I just got rid of my walking stick. What the heck do I want another one for? My wife is cracking up. Oh, so, uh, but I, I stick up funny. my cane in the car in the trunk if I ever need it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but I, I mean, I, God, I don't want to ever use that cane again. Um, so go, some great news, he, too. Yeah. Go, um, this guy was on a cane for a while, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, great news. Uh, this, so I've been applying for jobs like crazy all over the place, and I've had a few interviews, and uh, nothing panned out in the interviews. I've seen that and on I, your live today, yeah, yeah. And I, I worked at some uh, a place called Hannaford's in the past, and I really liked it. But the problem with the Hannaford's job, I was had the cane at the time, and I was in such pain, and I was, you know, dragging my leg, pushing a car, hanging on to one, and trying to get the groceries, and I couldn't get the shell bend over low to get the groceries, and you know, you know, put them in the bag properly without helping with customers helping me, and all that sort of thing, and I was messing up a lot, and, and I had, at that point, I hadn't been to work in that type of environment in about thirty years because I'd been retired, and uh, you know, I I just. I had I, at that same time the paper job called me up and I had a paper route job, not a paper route, but a you know photojournalism job. I had it had paper since I was twelve years old. <laughs> yeah. and, and I had to take some photographs for the local paper that paid me seventy five dollars a location for a story that I wasn't even there for five minutes and it was great. Some weeks I got a you know a dozen jobs, you know, 
and and I did get a good check at the end of the month. And uh, but that only lasted about four months. And then at that time, he had the hip surgery. And now it's been six months and I want to go back to work. So I, I didn't go back to the one that I was working at at the Hannaford's and but because I felt uncomfortable going there. And it was just funny because the guy that called me up he goes, do you know you put about 50 applications over here? <laughs> and I said, I didn't think I put that many. Well, because I thought I was putting in two different locations because we got two different Hannaford's in our city. And uh, so he called. He, see, so he called me up uh, to, <clears throat> last week, and I went for an orientation Thursday. He hired me, and he, he said, "You want full time or part time?" And he said, "We'll, we'll go full time for now, and then if it comes too much for me, we'll go part time. And if I can't do the job because I'm making too many mistakes, and I like working there, maybe you could put me in another department." And and, uh, and, and, and they're willing to work around my hours. With the uh, my wife's got to go for treatments every other Monday and her appointments and. And, uh, but yeah, when they call me up all of, all of a sudden that the city stuff and everything just became irrelevant. I don't want to really do the city stuff yeah. anymore. I worry about the city when I could be working and making money. Right. And you Moving guys, forward. you guys know right. yourself that everything's so stinking expensive. Right. I go to yeah. buy, I go to buy a dozen eggs. I mean, I don't get this. They were like three ninety nine a dozen. Next thing you know, I go in about two weeks later, they're five ninety nine a dozen. And now they're almost ten dollars a dozen for the same stinking eggs about a month ago with like three ninety nine. There goes yeah. what the heck is up with this crap? And, say and, the chickens have stopped laying eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, they, yeah. So they and I know they, folks that have chickens and they say they're not getting eggs right now. They're just chickens oh, wow. just weren't laying. To feed or something with the feed something or it, yeah. Yeah, but but I mean it's not just the chickens. It's the bacon. It's the the, the meats yeah. now. They they tell you that yeah. if you're doing keto. They have the organic meats. I can't afford organic oh, meat. No. All yeah. that meant to me was just yeah mm -hmm. more money, and uh, it's great honestly, if you can afford it. Honestly, Ron, you don't need to have organic, okay? Because uh, our systems are not used to having organic foods, right? Uh, okay, right, right. so that's that's like uh, switching, you know, switching gears in the middle of you know uh, middle of the ocean with, in a rowboat, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and to, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to do the organic if I can't afford it. What's the point no. in that? What's the point in me putting myself in the poorhouse trying to do it? And you know the grass fed, grass finished. Hey, just no. feed the doggone cow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fact of the matter is that we did what we did. We lost the weight that we did. My biggest thing was was I was two pounds shy. Actually, I think I was over three hundred pounds, but I was two pounds shy of three hundred. And I went to the doc. This is like two years ago. Okay, going into my second year, I guess. Went to the doctor's office, and just the way they were treating me. Okay, when I walk in, like I was 88 years old. I said, no, 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 yeah. no, this ain't going to happen. But the cane, let me hold your door. Can I get your coat for you? We'll bring the scale up here so you don't have to walk back. No, 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 no. no. Hold on a minute. Let's, let's put an end to that. So I told the doctor flat out that I'm going to, I did it back in 2015 and I was 44 pounds. But I got the poor me syndrome. You know, oh, well, why can't I, I have that. this? And why, why can't I have that? And I said, yeah. I gained 60 back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody knows that, that tale of woe, you know what I mean? But this oh, yeah. time, this time I didn't want to lose the weight. I wanted to get my health back. Okay. Two reasons. They had me on two different medications and it was a thousand dollars a month for medication. Okay. That's my end. Okay. Wow. I, said, I can't do this. Well, well no. we can switch you off to another me medication, but it might mm -hmm. cause complications. I don't want no complications. Okay. And I switched doctors and he sort of agreed to work with me. He said, it's against my better judgment because like Mike says, uh, they tell you it's not sustainable. Yeah. Okay? Right. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. Now there's a starting to, they're starting to come around a little bit more saying that the low oh, carb yeah. is good and, and stuff like that. My whole thing is to everybody is don't make it hard on yourself. Amen. Took me 50 years to get to where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Right. And it's not going to be overnight or a week. Nope. Yeah. The nope. first the first month I lost 17 pounds. I was static with it. Okay. But the other things started happening. Okay. I started losing pills, starting getting away from taking pills, starting to take medication. Mm -hmm. Hung my cane up. Okay. I had the little jazzy thing. Put that in the closet. Okay. And I started living a bit a little bit. Moving around, up to the pool, swimming. 
Hey, I was so big, I used to go up to the pool and the ladies all hung around me. I thought they were wanting me, but they wanted shade. They didn't want to <laughs> you know, oh, so but but it, it's it, and you we all know this, okay? So anybody mm -hmm. starting out, make it your own. Right. Okay, yeah. there's there's no one size fits all, make it your own. You gotta make it put it in your own pocket, right? Feed, feed, feed <clears throat> what you need. Feed what, what I you tell need. Exactly. What I tell people is I can, you know, well, like you said, Ron, I'm not a doctor. Don't claim to be, didn't play one on TV, and I didn't stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> so, but I can tell you what worked for me. Right. And, you know, I'm not giving out advice. I'm not saying you should do it the way I do it. I tell it all the time. Make it your own. Do your research. Figure yeah. out what it is. Figure out what works for you and make it your own. Because mm -hmm. that's the only way, if you, if it's what you can live with, that's the only way you're going to succeed at it. Yeah, I often tell people um, how I've been very successful. If if you want something, have something. Don't deprive yourself of anything. But don't exactly. beat yourself up about it if you have something. Everybody exactly. has bad that's days. It. That's right. I mean, I mean, Tom, <laughs> Tom and Mike can relate to this more than anybody. I've Absolutely. had bad months and I've gone six months without oh. not losing a pound. <laughs> but I, I, I've, yeah, I've never given up. But if you, if you go, years. if you go back to 2020 and August 17th, and you, you take 325 pounds and you divide it by what I weigh today, I've been averaging an average steady weight loss of about 1.4 pounds a week. And by doing that, instead mm -hmm. of losing 100 pounds overnight, you stand a better chance of keeping it off in the long haul. Right. Then, then you would. Then you would otherwise. It, you went from you went from a size sixty to size thirty two. So I mean, come on. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Without losing all. Without losing all. I stalled for a long time. Yeah. Okay. I, did, well, I didn't stall. I've been but I, 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 I stalled for two years. I maintained my weight the entire year of two thousand twenty two, and and even though I, I I went down to two or three a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, may, maybe God doesn't want me to get any lower than two twenty or two twenty three, but yeah. they. I, I mean, if I get any lower, people are going to start thinking if I if, if I, are you sick? You got cancer or something? Is something <laughs> wrong with you? You you know. But uh, mm -hmm. when uh, when yeah. that thing shut everything all down, and I because I told you earlier that I do the bingo charity on Friday nights. Um, the first night we went back to bingo, people they didn't even recognize me. They 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 thought my wife is. Did you get a divorce from your husband? I, I don't know who that guy is with you. You know, <laughs> they, they, they thought I was a completely different they, guy, mm -hmm. and, you know. And and uh, yeah. but the ones that did recognize me, they they couldn't get over to how much weight I had lost, you know. And that 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 uh, it makes you feel so good inside that that oh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. not about us individually. Yeah. My main goal, everybody, was just so if I can help one person get healthy. And that was my mission here on Earth before I leave. I got and, the same and, and, philosophy, and and I felt like I, I achieved that. And then some. I had a, uh, an eighty two year old the other night. She just became my uh, face for friend and my uh, YouTube channel subscriber. And she lives out in Australia. And she was asking me about my journey, and she wants to get healthy. It's never too late, guys, to get healthy. If you, yep. even if, even at that age, if you're really overweight and you're struggling. If you took off some weight, it doesn't have to be 100 pounds or anything, but gradually take off your weight and you'll be surprised that you could pick up a lot of years back in your life. You know, you know, Amen. And, and, I, I call it I, I call it the feel good factor. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so when you so when you get up, when you get up in the morning, and you, uh, you know, you know what I, I'm the older I get, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand the way we were raised. OK. Uh, Wonder Bread helps build bodies in 12 ways, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. And and here's the other thing, okay? We keep <laughs> saying about we're not doctors or – although back in the 70s, I thought I was a scientist, but no. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> here, here, here I we have – I got that. I know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, same here, here. Here we have, okay, oh. we got to make the disclaimer that we're not doctors. Who gave permission <laughs> – to these food companies to add vitamins to their products. True. Okay. It was yeah. a money maker. That's all it was. Okay. I said I had I almost got into a screaming match the other night with somebody about Cheerios. How they're heart healthy. I said, because they put a picture of a heart on the on a box? No. Oh, it says in the back that they put all these different vitamins in. It's fortified. Who allowed that? 
Who actually allowed that? That's like giving somebody a prescription. Yeah. Okay. That's that's why I look at it stuff right now. So most of the stuff I buy don't have any ingredients or have any labels no, on it. No, no. You got to be yeah. And uh, I, I'm sure you guys can relate. And then the gals, the guys out there watching the video. Um, back in my before I spot my behind up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, talking about the Fruit Loops and all that stuff like that. <laughs> I, I used to just take a box of that and I used to shove it in my mouth without the milk and just like it like it was candy, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, it you was. Know, it's same way like with the uh, Captain Crunch. I used to eat a whole box of it at a time with, with, with oh, milk, yeah. in the, milk in the morning. It's like I couldn't yeah. get enough. And then I had the sugar high the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we we in our local area we have a company called Try Some Potato Chips. Like they, somebody else is making the chips uh, now, but. In the past, I used to always buy the biggest size bag, and I swear over as many ch try some chips I bought over the years, I could have opened up my own potato chip factory with all the chips that I had <laughs> over the years. So I used to eat a whole bag at least religious, religiously one one a week, a bottle of Mountain Dew soda, and, 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 and with the pizza for a whole, not just one pizza, but a whole pizza by myself. And, and, and you can see why I had a weight problem over the years, you know, and and. Uh, yeah. I, 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 we all made the right decision to get out there and get healthy. And I, like I said earlier, I honestly believe had I not gotten my, uh, my act together, that I would have not been here talking about my lifestyle, my, my I'll, journey. I'll tell you so. what I did, what I would do. I'd like at work, I'd be at work and I'd get McDonald's and I'll go uh, and I'd take yeah, it. Yeah. Same here. The office. Yeah. Well, I would get the fries, but I would get two of the large fries. One fry was to eat, while traveling back to the office to eat lunch. <laughs> are you are you sure we didn't have the same schedule? Because when I did when I was working second shift all those years, my, my, every, every night I'd stop at McDonald's. It was two Big Macs, two large fries, and a Diet Coke. Yeah. Because I wanted a Diet Coke, and then so I want to feel guilty about eating the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I did well, the same I, thing. I ate one package of fries before I went home. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. It, it would be. You know that's that's the travel fry. Yeah. That's the tra <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Ron, what do you what do you think? Uh, I mean, if you if you do gain weight and stuff, you know, explain this, explain to people what your procedure is. If you do go off the wagon, a oh little yeah, bit or well, whatever. Oh well, yeah, I just okay. So I typically what I'll do um, if I'm having a bad month, say for instance, and I and I find myself getting too much off track. I uh, will typically do an egg fast or a beef and butter fast. I, I really love both of them. And they, I found a new way of cooking eggs now. I bought a mini pie dash maker. You can make a fried egg without frying it in under two minutes without the mess. And I plan on buying a, a, a mini pie maker that does six of them all at once. So I could crack six eggs in them in, in less than three minutes. I'll have six perfectly fried eggs, a couple for my wife, and I'll usually eat four of them. And, uh, so when I'm doing an egg fast, so basically an egg fast is uh, a guy by the name of Jimmy Moore invented the egg fast. And you can have up to six to eight eggs a day with a tablespoon of butter and one ounce of cheese per egg. And uh, you should eat one egg in the morning, at least a half an hour after you get up. And uh, and if you're still hungry, you know, like, like you said, you eat when you're hungry, you stop when you're not. And that's how it typically an egg fast is. And they, they recommend that you do it for no more than three to four days and then do a two day period of a transitioning slowly over the carbs. And what that by doing the egg fast, what that does to you, it helps your body get back on the ketosis because you're not burning, you're not eating any carbs. And, and once you're back in the ketosis, after right. you go and switch over the carbs, you gradually, you don't, you don't just eat a pile of carbs all at once. You continue on with a couple of eggs and maybe with something with carbs in it until you mm -hmm. slowly go back into keto, if that's what you're doing keto. Now, the problem with keto that I found was um, keto is very restrictive on carbs. So if you're doing true keto and you want to stay in the ketosis, you have to be in the 20 less carbs a day. And you know, right. but that's how I was very successful losing my weight at the very beginning, getting involved with car manager or a my fitness pal. And there's a whole host of other uh, applications to use to calculate out your mm -hmm. macros and how many you need to be eating to lose your weight. And, uh, and of course, I was writing down everything just like a journal, what I'm eating for that day. And right, and, and then I was doing my videos every week. And, uh, and you then the other key. Do you test yeah, for yeah, yeah, I do. I I do got a Mojo meter, and if you don't, if you, and they're only about forty dollars on Amazon, or, or and uh, but the strips are very expensive, and uh, so anyways, um, 
Yeah, you prick your little finger with that, and you take a sample, and it, it reads out your 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 glucose and your uh, ketones. And then, uh, or if you don't want that, then you could buy the single strips, and you can, you know, when you when you go wee wee in the morning, you could take one of those, mm -hmm. which is politely that word, I guess I don't know, but um, yeah, you could do it that way too. And then uh, there's all kinds of fasts to help you. Then my one of my favorite ones is the beef and butter fast. Uh, so I, again. Um, you eat when you're hungry on the beef and it's just beef and butter. I mean, how simple is that? And I, mm -hmm. and what I do is like today, I'm going to give you a perfect example. I didn't do the beef and butter fast, but, um, I bought two, uh, my favorite first cut steaks today. And I like, we both love a uh, steak well done. And I'll usually pop, I pop it into the air fryer. I season it on both sides and I score the steak with a knife on both sides. And then I pop it into the air fryer for about 30 minutes until it's well done. And my, this is the first time my wife has ever, ever ate the whole piece of steak the way it was because she usually only eats about half of the amount. And she says, yeah, it was, for some reason, it was really good today. So I, so I seasoned it with a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder. And then I popped it out and I let it rest for a little while. And then, and then normally I would take a, a say, like um, maybe about three or four tablespoons of butter and, and salt and melt it down in the microwave and add a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder, salt and pepper to taste and stir it around a little bit and, and just put it on top. And that would be my my go-to when I want to do the beef and butter fast. And it doesn't have to be just steak. It could be any form of beef. It could be chicken. It could be poultry. You, you, but uh, and, and you're allowed to have uh, one, yeah, one tablespoon of butter per ounce of steak or whatever you do. And uh, I'll typically, what, what I'll do too when I'm doing the beef and butter fast, if I don't have the steak on hand, I'll buy a, the uh, big package of ground beef. And I'll fry it all up, look like scrambled right. hamburg, and I'll put it in these little plastic containers, and I'll take about a half a stick of butter on each. I want, well, not really, maybe about four tablespoons of butter, and I'll put it on each little container. And when it cools down, I'll put it in the refrigerator, and, and I'll have that throughout the course of the whole week. And what that does is it, it cleans out your system, and it helps you to get back into ketosis. And I and I really and and I, I love the beef and butter fast. I'm planning on doing another one this week. And it's recommended that when you do a beef and butter fast and or an egg fast, take some measurements. What, what I typically would do is take a full frame photograph or with a video, take measurements from your neck to neck. I would take, yeah, one, two, three measurements, your, your, your neck to your neck, your breast to your breast, your belly button to your belly button, and your waist to your waist. That's all you need to take for your, 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 me, your body measurements. And then I would... Record your scale number down on a scale and record it. You don't need to take your measurements every day, but record your scale every day. And you, you might be, you, you might like say, for instance, if I did this, I'm going to be doing another beef and butter fast probably uh, towards the midweek. Um, you write down, you might see, say, say, like if I take my, my measurement on my scale, I might be 220. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I'll be 222. Well, what the heck happened? What did I do? Eat a pizza overnight? And that's happened to me before. And then two days later, boom, I drop about five or six pounds. But the, the most yeah, the most successful um, beef and butter fast I ever did one time, I lost like 12 pounds in one week. But I realized wow. afterwards it was all water that I had in me because right. my stomach felt so bloated <laughs> with all the holiday junk. And I usually do those around the holiday, but I, I plan on doing another beef and butter fast this week. Yeah. So my doctor said to me, he said, well, when you lose, and he said, on keto, when you lose, you're losing water weight. I said, is it weight? <laughs> Does the water yeah. not count? Water yeah, I mean, not? I mean, what part yeah. of this don't you understand? Yeah. That's why I had to switch so, doctors, because we were button heads. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. So when you when you do your beef and butter fast, do you season the meat? Yes, you can put any keto approved condiments that you want to put on okay. the meat, it's, and, and it's okay. fine. I, I, I have the sugar-free ketchup that I buy, the uh, Heinz, uh -huh. and... and uh, I had oh today I didn't have the uh, butter on my steak. I had the uh, I think it's uh okay uh, do you do oh, the use the barbecue sauce is sugar free oh he that, yeah that, he that, 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 oh, oh, that, great stuff oh, oh, does, does, right does, does, does it he I just recently found it at the grocery store. I goes oh yeah. good I don't have to order it on Amazon anymore. <laughs> yeah. there you yeah, go. You, you know, yeah, yeah I, like, I like that. I like the uh, hickory, hickory flavor. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's my favorite barbecue has, sauce that he has right there. It's that hickory. Yeah. Now, now, do you restrict your salt at all? Uh, yes, because because um, do. here's what happened was uh, Donna. I took her out for her birthday in January. Yeah, January down at Longhorns, and I had a regular steak and a baked potato, and and uh, the, 
I goes, I couldn't even eat skin. And I, the skin to me on a potato is the best part of the potato. And when I, I put the, I tried to, I put the potato in my hand, my hand was saturated and solved. I goes, I, I, I goes, I told the girl, I, I goes, is this something new you guys are doing? Cause you never used to do this before. And it goes, Oh, we should have been doing this right along. And then somebody was complaining about Texas Roadhouse. They're doing the same thing over there. So, and then my wife couldn't eat a potato. And I, she said, she said, well, I could give you another one. I said, no, because I'm halfway done my meal and I don't want another potato now. So I, yeah. I only ate just a little bit of the inside and that was it. But, but uh, then it made me realize from now on, if any of you guys and gals ever go to those places, tell them you don't want salt, they put your own salt on the potato. Yeah. You know, but when I, when I do cook a potato at the house once in a while as a treat, I'll take a little bit of avocado oil, we'll put it in a Ziploc bag, and just put a little bit of salt and pepper, and I'll coat the potato really well. And then I'll poke holes in the potato, and I'll put it in aluminum foil, and I'll tote that in the, put that in the oven until it's you know, fully cooked, and it's got a nice golden dark color on the potato skin. And that, but I don't have that all that often. It's just once in a blue moon for a treat. That's all I do. And that's only if I'm having a good week, you know. See, yeah. I I increased my salt because they had me on a salt free. Okay. okay with with blood pressure pills. Yeah. I increased my my sugar. Um, sugar. Oh God, government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I took about a brain fart. Holy crap! Oh. I increased my salt intake, and I don't take. I'm not on any kind of uh, blood pressure pills anymore. Okay, okay. Because right. the kid, you know, because the kidney functions, because right, right. you know, mm -hmm. ketosis, it draws the sugar. Um, what? It's with the sugar, draws the salt out of your system. Yep. So you, yep. you got to keep your sugar level up. I mean, your salt level. So what level, yeah. is going on with me with sugar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they uh when I, when I do a beef and butter fast or any kind of fast for that matter, I'm always doing electro. A lot of make sure you drink your electrolytes are very oh, yeah. important to get that in there, especially you like get it in you. When I go walking, if, if you're if you're having all kinds of problems with your, with your body cramping up, it's it's telling you that you're not having enough electrolytes in your body. It's very important to have that in there, and that's how I've ever been very very successful over the last couple of years losing weight and then, and then some. And you know, and and I, and, I, and I, I'm not stopping. You know, here's the deal, guys and girls out there. How many times do you see a YouTuber like there's this great YouTuber lady? Uh, one of she was Kim's weight loss commitment, and I started following her. She's in the military. She actually she retired and she went back to the military, and she had she had lost a ton of weight. She was doing keto and all that stuff. She was putting up some great videos, and then all of a sudden I didn't hear from her for a while. She just kind of like went off the face of the planet, you know. And then about once every six months, she'll put in the pop up video, and uh, you know, but. Uh, um, my goal going forward is once I reach my goal weight, which is 180 pounds, I that's my target weight. And, uh, and if I don't get there, that's fine too. But, um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay with the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm going to continue putting up, uh, moderate, mot motivational videos every week and every daily. I'm going to continue doing live videos now that I'm getting to it really good. And, and, uh, I'm going to have a cooking segment every so often. And, uh, a live cooking section. I was going to do it in the back. Oh, yeah. Was that, that was funny. Uh, getting away from this story for a minute. <laughs> so I made another strawberry cheesecake the other day, right? And, and uh, I said, okay, the girl Myra from Low Carb Love, right? She's got a great channel. She's another one that lost over 100 pounds. You might want to think about getting old of her and see if she might come on to your, your, your show sometime, right? And uh, she lives out in California. And uh, so anyways, so I'm going to do the cheesecake again. So I had my cream cheese in my bowl, and it was a smaller bowl, and, and uh, I, I made it exactly how I made it the last time. But instead of using the handheld mixer, I used my stick mixer, okay? So I had it over here to my right, and I'm over there, oh, are these numbers, what are these numbers with the damn thing? And I had it cranked up full, right? So dummy me, I pulled it out like this, and I'm, going, and I'm trying to go like this with the bowl to get it nice and mixed up. <laughs> I, the, I'm going to be like Tony Beats there in Gold Rush. The beepity beepity beep went all <laughs> over the place. The cream went all over my curtain, like all over my camera, all over my walls, all over my shirt. It was and all over my computer screen. I goes, oh, what, what a, what a bleepity bleepity mess that I had to clean up. And my wife says, uh, well, what else is that for new? <laughs> 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 Yeah, but I mean, these are some of the things we do when we're cooking. That it's fine. I, I yeah. save those video clips for outtakes because when the guy that I did yeah. the studio with when he retired, he he just recently retired this year. He became uh, eligible for retirement, 
And I said, Kyle, are you still going to be coming down here to do the studio? And he was a director. I don't want to in a great while. I said, well, just enjoy your retirement. But I'll just let you let, give you a little bit of hint. When you reach retirement age, after a while, you're never really retired, you know. So, uh, But he wants to spend more time with his grandchildren, and I get that. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, he told me, which is even to this day, if you guys are filming and you and you mess up, save those segments because you could put them together as outtakes. And that's what I'm telling everybody Gen- that wants to do a YouTube channel. Ginger does that over at uh, Not For Nothing Homestead. Yeah. Does, and I, yeah. I have done a few outtakes, but it's not – I haven't really saved them. And I, I'm thinking I need to do that. They would yeah. call the police on my outtakes. <laughs> well, one of, one of the very first ones that I had done and I didn't realize it was I bought a waffle maker, right? A regular waffle maker. And, you know, once you get them heated up, you can't control the heat on them or that right. stuff there. Right. And I got the idea of trying to do a couple of shaffles in there. So I made the egg mixture and then I put the cheese and I put a big glob of cheese on top and I closed it. And I was thinking it was like the uh, regular chaffle maker. And then I picked it up about maybe a minute into it. And I had a gluey cheese like this all over the place. <laughs> oh, oh, what? I ended up throwing out the waffle maker. It was so bad. Yeah. I couldn't even clean it up. <laughs> but you could so, hear me swearing in the background. And my wife was swearing at me. It was funny as anything. And I, I kept that outtake. But it, I, 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 to, I, I, I put the the F word with the asterisk, you know, what we were saying. <laughs> so people knew, you know, you know. Yeah, it was just, it was funny. It was comical. So, so Ron, Ron, I'm an Irishman. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm a, I'm a Frenchman. Okay. Go ahead. All right. And I got, I got this big holiday coming up on the 17th Six. of March. Uh-huh. Okay. I got it, yes. So now I have, I happen to know a guy. All right. Who actually saved my life this year. Okay. Because I like, I love rye bread. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing better than that. Cause I make my homemade pastrami or I make oh, a homemade yeah. corned beef. Okay. So usually I have to, you know, put on a lettuce wrap or something or this and that. But I know a guy who made actually made a rye chaffle. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, a matter of fact, this guy re- became really good. I had to call him. <laughs> you son of a gun! You we hit we struck gold. <laughs> My buddy over here, he made a video. He made he made a chop, but he put caraway seeds in into the chaffle. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my wife. Looks at me. She's, you know, she in the same room. She has com- her computer there, and we both were watching Mike's uh, thing. And she turned around and looked at me. She says, "I'll be right back." <laughs> she went out to the kitchen and she made. Sure, and I got to tell you, if if I blindfolded you, okay, and let you bite into this this chaffle, you would swear to God that you had rye bread. Okay. So I'm saved this year. So I'm going to have corned beef on it. Chaffle rye bread. <laughs> so when you make your rye bread, are you you still putting the egg mixture in with cheese yep. in it? And the same way you cl- okay. The, it's the classic chaffle, two thirds cup of cheese, yeah. one egg. Okay. And just add caraway seeds to it. So what kind of cheese are you using? Mozzarella cheese or mozzarella yeah. cheese? Okay. Mozzarella cheese. Okay. I tell you what, I was I was like I was like like you know, I've been cooking all my I've been restaurants the whole bit. I was like this, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. That's how good it was. That's it. Okay. I mean, that is the that's what I try to explain to people when I say play with your food. You don't have to try to mimic the or the original or try to add ingredients. You don't get no cleaner, okay, than an egg, right. cheese, okay, and caraway seeds in an iron. Okay. That's it. It that doesn't get any better than that. If you right. were looking for that flavor and stuff. Yeah. So it, you ahead. you not too long ago, okay. I don't buy no jar of sauce or anything like that. I make my own because that's what I did for a living. Okay. But not everybody cooks. Okay. But you, my friend, okay, got the right particular stuffed Rayos. Okay. And I urge everybody, if you're going to get a tomato sauce, buy Rayos. Okay. Yep. A little bit more, but it's good stuff and it's mm-hmm. keto friendly as hell. Oh, it is. No it's added cl- sugar and it it's is the closest. Oh, so flavor. It's, yeah. It it's is the so much flavor. Now, I'm so planning a. a uh, this coming week, I'm planning on making my own sauce from scratch, and I'm going to film it, and I'm going to put it in the crock pot. And the uh, I've yeah. often learned by experience, the longer you cook a spaghetti sauce, the better it tastes. Absolutely, yeah. and, 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 to, to a point. Absolutely. I'll let it cook. I'll let it. Uh, I'll do all my meatballs in the oven, and, and my mm-hmm. sausages in the air fryer, and then I'll put it all together into the uh, crock pot, and I'll buy the uh, 
the uh, the block of Parmesan cheese, and I haven't been able to find a block of uh, mozzarella cheese for some reason or other. But I just saw it yesterday that market basket they had some already pre graded, and which is fine. I'll just yeah. I'll just dump it all in. But I I don't. Uh, people say, can I have your recipe? I, I I'm like Rachel Ray and all of them. I go buy a palm of your hand is usually a tablespoon, and I'm, I'm just kind of yeah. like a dump and go guy. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't just, usually just, I, I specifically calls yeah. for a measurement. I don't usually measure it. I just don't be, measure. Just, the only time I measure is when I'm baking. That's yeah. it. I don't right. measure any other time. Just be careful with just be careful with the tomato paste. Tomato yeah. paste is concentrated, and the yeah. carb count is very high. Yeah, I know you can get that. a regular can of tomatoes, okay, yeah. and it'll be four four to five carbs, okay. Right, right. One that. small one small can of uh, tomato paste is six right. carbs. And, and I, I did be with that. I did buy that Reyes uh, mm -hmm. uh, pasta. I really loved that, but the problem was I cooked the whole bag and it made quite a lot of it, even more so than the regular <laughs> pasta that we bought. <laughs> but I did buy another that I. I bought some rigatonis that I have in the cabinet and uh, I bought some, uh, some bows and when they got kind of like sealable bags. So the next time I want that, what I'll probably do is make sure I weigh out the cob count and then do just eat for that one meal. So I don't eat spaghetti all week. Cause I don't want to eat spaghetti. all let week. Me, let me, let me give you a quick, quick tip. Okay. If you want, you have the craving for pasta. Okay. Mm -hmm. The larger the pasta, the better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so buy lasagna. Okay. Take four four lasagna, you know, strips. Yeah, right, right, about right. That long. Yeah, yeah, I know. Boil okay. them. Okay. Take them out, let them cool, and then take a knife and cut them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you cut back on your carbs. And you okay. And you'll get you get yourself filled up on it without eating a pound of spaghetti. Wow. You know. That wow. makes a lot of sense. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I bought a uh, mini pie dash maker. I you know if I wanted one, and so Christmas time we. Uh, Actually, it was, uh, yeah, we saw it at Christmas time and just recently we went back to Kohl's and I saw one there. It was mocked up at $29 and I got it for like $15. And he goes, Oh, well, I got it all less than half price. So I bought it, I brought it home and I cooked up mm. a, an egg squishy. And they, I don't know, I can't pronounce that right name, but I, I did it according to the YouTube and, and it came out really great. And then uh, I said, I want to try cooking an egg in it. And so I, I got, uh, when again, YouTube, you know, the, uh, uh, our, uh, our tutorial knowledge over here and uh so you heat it up once the light goes it just works the same way as a mini dash when the light goes on it's ready to use i put, took one egg and cracked it and put it inside closed the lid for one minute unplugged it for one minute and when i popped it out i had the perfectly cooked egg with a little bit of yolk in the middle and i go this is a game changer i don't have to find nothing up and i don't have to watch it or anything so so uh when, it, when, it, when, it, when it was oh yeah so and then i saw i wanted to try one with the pie so i bought a pillsbury uh, pie crust and i put it in there and i cut it out with the oh yeah it gives you a pie crust thing that fits on it you cut out your own but your top and your bottom and i did that and i i'm thinking 13 minutes and i goes wait a minute because I, I i made a low carb pizza quablo that i put inside the pie crust mm -hmm. and, and I, I was thinking like 13 minutes to cook this and, and then then after about three or four minutes longer than i should have left it on the outside of the crust started getting really black and i could smell it so bad in there i thought it was going to set off the smoke alarm <laughs> so i i killed it at that point but it just taught me a lesson that i just got to I, I don't think that particular pie crust was made for that particular mini dash so yeah. now i'm gonna have to figure out something else for that but when i was watching another youtube with something doing something similar to that with the uh she had taken a can of uh those apples that, that were already pre-cut with the uh with the, mm -hmm. the filling but it was sugar-free right. from Wal the, the walmart brand mm -hmm. and she did something similar but she didn't use the pillsbury she had made her own and that may maybe that's what i probably should have done but I, I just, uh, I, I'm still playing around with different ideas because I'm going to get ready to film out a whole series of videos using the mini pie dash maker with that. And uh, speaking of that, the shorts, Tom, um, somebody told me that uh, the YouTube within the next few months there, instead of having that you go straight up with the videos, they're going to allow you to do the uh, vertical way, the horizontal way. So I, I'm, I'm oh. hoping that's going to be true because I get a lot of videos that are all horizontal. <laughs> you, you, you can do it now. Yeah, I just did one last night. If you go look at, track it down. Look, uh, I made um, actually I made spring rolls. Yeah, okay. okay? So I just peppered an onion in a spring roll and deep fried. I made that, then I turned the camera, experiment with it, and it come up come up vertical. But the other one was the picture itself was horizontal. 
So I put low carb on the top and keto on mm -hmm. the bottom. Okay. It was long like this and all black. So okay. it can be done. And that's, okay. yeah, just switching around because um, I don't know what's going on, but I think TikTok, I don't know what's going, what's going to happen. Pre I, pre I pre think TikTok is going to eventually go away because of all the uh, political that was involved in that. We, we won't talk about that on the channel because I don't want you to get a strike. But, um, you know, so, I, I, I know what's going on with everything. I just can't say it right now. Yeah. So, oh, so, so you, YouTube, YouTube is, is stepping up their game. Because TikTok is nothing but shorts, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're picking up they're they're picking up their game a little bit as far as you know with, with the shorts and stuff like that. So you can maneuver it around. I did. Mm -hmm. The only problem is you got to be careful with the music. That, that, that's right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. You know, we're running up on how long we wanted to keep this to. But uh, okay. a quick question for you before we close this out. Yeah, because we're already at an hour and ten. Yeah. So uh, if if you when you're steady in the keto, uh, you're you're not doing the beef and butter or the egg fast or giving yourself any treat days and all. That's what correct. is a what's one of, what's your favorite go to meal that's keto? <clears throat> Good question. Uh, pizza. Well, pizza. well okay. Right. I make my own pizzas. Um, once in a while, like I we just bought a regular pile of pizza last week, and but uh, here's the key. The old Ron would have ate the whole pizza by himself. <laughs> this Ron only ate two slices, and I was satisfied. Okay, Donner, Donner, Donner only had two, yeah two slices, and then we got another meal out of it. Okay, the key is moderation. All right, but yes. when 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 my go to meal is about ninety five percent of the time, I make my own pizzas because I want to know what I'm putting into my mouth. Yep. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, and real real quick uh, uh guys here here's my here's my my take on this whole thing. Um I got myself to the point where because of the type 2 diabetes got my starting mm -hmm. to get my health back and everything to where I'm going around nursing that. Now if I do fall off, my blood sugar doesn't go up and stay up. Yeah. Okay. It comes down like a normal human being, okay, within that time frame that they they say it's supposed to come back. Okay. okay. So it does spike like everybody else does, but it doesn't yeah. stay there. Yeah. And that to me is worth its weight in gold right there. Okay. Yep. And it's starting to become a little bit more normal. So that if you uh, do have a slice of pizza or two slices of pizza, it's going to go up because everybody's blood sugar spikes. Mine stays. Yep. Everybody else goes down. So that's, right. that's the key right it's, there when you it, said moderation. It, it, you yeah. Know, and, and if you get invited out to a function or whatever and they ask you to bring something, why don't you try – Making a keto meal, but don't tell them it's keto. And yeah, you, exactly. you, you, you'll be surprised. A lot of people like that better than some stuff that it's there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. I totally and you, agree. I mean, if you bring in, uh, all right, for instance, you bring in cream spinach. Yeah. That's a keto meal. That's yeah. a keto dish. Anybody that comes, at it, anybody that comes know? to my house and has dinner or sits down and eats dinner, they're eating keto, whether they like it or not. Okay. Right. And half of them, Half of them don't don't know what what it is anyway. So yeah, I agree. Right. I, it's like at the holidays when the holidays are around. I do it other times too. But for the holidays, my grandkids they tell me, "Papa, are you going to make your squash casserole?" Because that's, that's great. It's keto. What I'm making is it's oh, yeah. absolutely keto, one hundred percent. Spaghetti yeah. squash, I love that. And zucchini, you could, you could take zucchini and make noodles out of them, and just put some of that yeah. red sauce on there with a little bit of ground beef, and then you got your spaghetti. How, how simple is that, exactly. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, yeah. I want to and thank I, you guys for having me on tonight. And, oh, thank uh, you for coming up. Appreciate you yeah, doing. Uh, it. I just want to remind everybody: don't forget to subscribe to all our channels and tell your friends. And yep. uh, we, we're all here to help. We all here to support and help one another. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I'm hoping to eventually get up to over 500 subscribers, and who knows down the road, maybe a thousand. I don't know, you know. But if it doesn't happen, then I'm just here to help as many people that want my help. And, and we're not leper. We're not lepers. No, no, we, no. Just, we just lost weight. That's all. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, and if you live locally, and you want a walking body, uh, give me a shout and say, hey, Ron, I saw you guys on Facebook, and I really love your channel, yeah. and I and I want to go walking with you. And I'm always looking for a walking body, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, and and also, I used to tell, I used to think, wow, for me to lose weight, I'm gonna have to lose a limb, you know. <laughs> But uh, I, I thought the same thing. 
Yeah. Well, I found I figured out. Hey, I don't have. I can keep all my limbs. You know. Hey, and, and everybody, please try to ride travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the video. It's out there. I'll probably. Well, I'll try to put it on did, here. I'll probably link it. When you did that shuffle challenge, I made that Oreo shuffle, and it, it was really good. But oh, here's why. Yeah. Here's why happened. Uh, <laughs> I had it that morning. It was so good. But I had. I made. I made the one that I had the two, and then I had one extra one that, that a single one, and I had a mm -hmm. bunch of the, the cream that was like left over. So I scooped it all out and I put it on my shuffle, and I'm going like this, and it, whoop, it went all over my pants and all over. Oh. <laughs> I had just changed and took a shower. And I was getting ready to leave in the morning. He goes, now I got to change my pants again. It was funny, uh, you, you know. He goes, oh my oh, god, wow. it, it was it, it was it was comical what we do when we cook. And you know, uh, you, oh, you yeah. guys know, and I'm just telling the ladies and guys out there, I'm I'm having the time of my life right now, cooking and and, and everything. I, you know what? Don't be afraid to cook. Don't be afraid to experiment. And if you uh, mess up, my, oh, it happens. You my know, best advice. My best advice to you guys and gals is: you do you. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. You know, Amen. You're, you're you're the boss of your own food. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. But thank you for having. Well, me maybe tonight. it doesn't work this time. You work. You do, you figure out another. You, you know, yeah. Thomas Edison. He <clears throat> he said when they asked him, said, uh, "So you failed two thousand times on making a light bulb?" He said, "No, I just found two thousand ways it didn't work." I just right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I remember that when they said that on National Treasure. I remember that movie. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's good. But anyways, yeah, thank you for having me again. And uh, anytime you want to get together with for another chat, you know, you know, more than welcome to come on in. And Tom, you you usually do a set. Don't you use a Saturday night on on late in the morning on Sunday morning. On Saturday, uh, sometimes once in a while I do. Yeah. Once yeah, in a while. yeah, yeah. Because usually I'm up at that hour. Because I um. I belong to that exclusive club now lately. I get up every morning at 2 30, 3 o'clock, and then I'm up all day, you know. That's me, baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm sipping down on my coffee, and then I'm watching my YouTube videos and get caught up on sporting events and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I had the headphones. I run through sales where it happens. Yeah. I had the headphones on listening to music. Yeah. I, I play the drums also, and I'm listening to music one night, okay? And I started singing. It's like 2 30 in the morning. My wife comes out from the other room. She says to me, Shut up. There's <laughs> people trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, we hear that. I hear you. We hear, uh, I hear you. Well, we live in a, we live in a, yeah, we live uh, in the department. You, hear that apartment it. noise that keeps us up. But yeah, but anyway, thank you, Mike, what for heck? having us there yeah. tonight. But, but we'll, we'll chat again another night, plan another night. Sounds and good. This will be up on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night. Okay. I'll remember yeah. to remind everybody Alrighty. and I'll share the link. I have a good night. Y'all later. And, uh, like I... Mike, stick on clear, kill it. And All stick right. Y'all have a good night, too. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. okay. Bye.